Welcome into Stacking the Box yet again live at Radio Row right here in Las Vegas. I want to say sunny Las Vegas, but let's be real now, Malcolm, not super sunny. Malcolm, welcome back. Final day together on Radio Row. Absolutely, sir. Looking forward to the, to, to the final day of uh, Radio um, of uh, Media Row. And uh, we have some exciting uh, guests, uh, you know, uh, hopping on uh, today. We got at Bar Beach Miller. We got Saquon Barkley and Tommy DeVito. We have Steve Avila. We have Brandon Cooks and Stefan Gilmore. And we have Bobby Odorike. I'm really excited, man. It's been a great, great week doing this with you, Malcolm. You've done a, a phenomenal job. Obviously, we're here, unified coverage of the Super Bowl with Special Absolutely. Olympics and fan sided. And um, it's been a joy working with you, man. It's been a joy working with you as well, Sterling. Uh, if you had if you had to say one highlight of this week, what, what would that highlight for you be? Oh, man. Chiefs being in the Super Bowl. How about that one? Yes. We'll go with the Chiefs being in the Super Bowl. You actually had a chance to go to NFL Honors last night. Yeah, I did. T talk more about that experience. Oh, oh my goodness, uh, Sterling. NFL Honors red carpet last night was incredible. Got to interview uh, Tyrod Taylor, Gail King, uh, Andrew Whitworth, Jerry Jones. Jerry the, Jones? Yeah, Jerry Jones, the owner of the Cowboys, Micah Parsons. Wow. Oh, man. I, it. it B. John Robinson of the uh, Atlanta Falcons last night. Yeah. And then Kerry Champion, Taylor Rooks, a, a Bleacher Report. It was awesome. What was Jerry Jones like? I can't picture. We've talked to a lot of players. Yeah. We have not talked to an owner. Yeah. Not, especially the most hands-on owner yeah. in sports. What was it like talking Man, with Jerry? Jerry Jones, I got to tell you, Sterling, was just very, very um, – very just, uh, very just serene, just, just very welcoming as a person, you know, just very awesome to talk to. Um, he was just phenomenal. Uh, everyone who is listening right now, as a heads up, uh, if the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, and we can raise a thousand dollars for Special Olympics, yeah. so it goes for a great cause. Patrick Allen, co-host on Arrowhead Addict, is getting a tattoo. So this is a big deal. If you care about the community, you care about Special Olympics, yes. or even if you just care about seeing Patrick do something stupid, donate, any amount counts. Picture Sarah McLaughlin with the wings, or the arms of an angel yes. behind this, yep. right? Let's do it, let's get to a thousand bucks. We are close, we are at about 865. So thank you guys so much. And again, it goes to a great, great cause. cause. Um, and uh, I've, also had, I've also had an exciting week as well the thunderbirds were were amazing the interview they gave me a nickname and i love the nickname they gave me they gave me smoke so i am gonna absolutely keep that nickname i love it and uh it's been a phenomenal week can't wait to can't wait to have at barbie jamila hop on sag in the box uh shortly yeah it's gonna be a great time uh and by the way for everyone listening right now if you've not downloaded the bet mgm app You'll definitely want to take advantage of this limited offer. New users who sign up through our link must deposit $10 and place a first wager of $5 on any live bet. Once your bet is placed, you will instantly receive $158 in bonus bets. You will get two bonus bet tokens of $50 and one $58 token, allowing you to make multiple wagers with your bonuses. This offer is only available if you sign up through our link, bit.ly forward slash arrow 158. You can find that link in the description below, our stream, as well as scan the QR code on screen to start signing up. Again, the link is bit.ly forward slash arrow 158. This offer ends right after the big game, so don't miss out. Offers only available to new customers who are 21 plus and physically present in legal gambling states. Please remember to always gamble responsibly. Check the episode description for the link and full terms of the offer. Yeah. Now, um, I will say, we got a couple of, uh, of bets earlier. So, some betting advice from a betting expert. And uh, I was told Rice over 67 and a half receiving yards. I was told Kittle over three and a half receptions and Kittle over 47 and a half yards receiving. I like all three of those. You don't have to do it. Don't blame me if it doesn't hit. But also if you want to use it, the bet MGM app that is the way to do it. And again, using our code, bit.ly forward slash arrow 158. Man. Man, what a... What a week. What a week. What a week. And we are nearly there. there. We are almost, almost to, sun, almost to Sunday. Almost yeah, to the, almost to the of, Super Bowl. Two, two days away from the big game, uh, Sterling. I'm telling you, 
it's going to be amazing. It's going to be a, uh, it's going to be back and forth. Um, both teams are going to go at it. It's going to be a great game. It's going to be very close. But in the end, like I, you know, I've said this to you all week long, and I'll, and I'll keep uttering it. Kansas City, Kansas City, hands down, is going to win this game. Hands down. Yeah, hands down. How close? I got them winning by three. By three. So yeah. it's a close game. Hands close down. Game. But still a close game. Yeah, still hands a close down. game, hands down, absolutely. Why do you think the Chiefs win this game? Why do you feel I, so confident about it? I feel so it? confident the Chiefs are going to win this game is because they're going. Spaz is going to dial up blitzes on block, on Brock Purdy, and I feel like I feel like Isaiah Pacheco is going to have a big game. I feel like Chris Jones is going to have a big game. Carl Loftus for uh, Kansas City is going to be big as well. So I just think that Kansas City is just going to do enough to beat San Francisco. Awesome. All right, Malcolm. All right. We got at Barbie Jamila. What's here going on? Sack in the box. Malcolm. You know him as former NFL player, current host of CBS, current host of the talk on CBS, co-host of American Ninja Warrior. But he also is the voice of Thursday Night Football promos for Amazon Prime and was voted People Magazine's 2023 Sexiest man. Uh, <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. He's man. also brought to us by Experian. Yeah, yes. What yeah. are you doing with Experian right now? Yeah, so Experian, you know, I've partnered up with Experian now for several years, and they have Experian Boost, which is really out to help people boost their credit score, yeah. doing the simple things and simple responsibility that we do on a normal basis, right? Paying for your utility bills, paying for your streaming services. These things help to improve and boost your credit score. Experian Boost is revolutionary. You know, it used to be people thought that you had to put yourself in debt by going getting a credit card to try to improve your credit score. Well, they flipped that whole idea upside down and going, no, like you don't have to go do all of this craziness to improve your credit score. Yes. We want to help people improve it by giving them the opportunity to get credit for what they do already, taking care of business. Now, they did a survey, which is interesting because the people who are preparing to watch the game, that 30% of them said they don't have a financial game plan. And when you think about that, like think about going into a football game without a game plan. Like that's, that's, a, bad idea. that's a bad idea. <laughs> it's a bad idea if you're going into a football game without a game plan. Well, 80% of those people say, you know what, they want to do something to improve their credit score. And so Experian has something else that they've just rolled out, which is, to me, it's, it's genius. There's the, uh-oh, where, where is it? Here it is. They've got the Experian Smart Money Digital Checking Account that nice, allows nice. people to set up a checking account. Yeah, this is my actual card right here. Boom. Just tap it right there. I'll show you my number here. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, you going to? He's over there trying to get the number. He's like, oh, hold on. Get that number. And we are in Vegas. He's like, I'm going to boost my credit all right. Yeah, but, you know, with this, you can set it up, and it's all embedded. The Experian Boost is embedded within the Experian Smart Money Digital Checking Account. And all of that stuff that you're spending that helps, is, that qualifies towards boosting your credit, it gives, it's simple, man. It's simple yeah. math. It's not the new math, it's simple math. You know what I mean? I, I, well, yeah. I need simple math. Yeah. I, I can hardly count to 21 in blackjack, yeah. so uh, <laughs> I, I need that simple math. Abar, let's yeah. talk about your career. I mean, I looked at I looked at your career. You went to San, San Diego State. Yeah, go Aztecs. San, you went to the Aztecs in the Mountain West. What was that transition like as a linebacker in college and into the NFL? You know, it was uh, it was interesting. You know, there was a lot of different transitions. You know, before I got to San Diego State, I was a basketball player at mm -hmm. Crenshaw High School. Um, I only played one year of high school football, um, so I had to make that transition. I got to college football on a scholarship and didn't know a lot about football because I'd only played it for one year. Yeah. And I remember my, uh, my defensive line coach, Coach Ken Delgado, um, he said, I want you to line up on the guard. And I looked at him like, hmm, which one's the guard? <laughs> and his eyes got big and was like, what? And he's like, this is the blank tackle. This is the blank <laughs> guard. This is the blank center. And over there is the blank and blank 
tight end. Yeah. And I never forgot it. And so whenever I would like line up, I would be like, this is the blank. This is the <laughs> this is the blank. This is the blank. I had to remember it that way in order to you know go. But I made that transition. But then when I got to the NFL, I had to make another transition from D lineman to outside linebacker. Yeah. And that was probably one of the more challenging transitions just because it had a lot more levels to it. I had to understand coverage, I had to understand route concepts and you know what the quarterback is doing and all this other kind of stuff. So, um, but you know what? The great ones adjust. And so what I learned in that process, although I didn't have a prominent NFL career, you know, I did learn how to make adjustments on the fly. And yeah. so I'm forever grateful for all the coaches that I had from my, the late, great Marty Schottenheimer, um, and all those coaches who invested their time in teaching me and helping me transition. Yeah, what, what is that like for a lot of people listening? Obviously, it's very unique. 4-3, three, 3-4 three, defense is going to yep, be different. Yep. Go from defensive end to outside linebacker yep. in those positions. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a little different. Can you give a little background to the schematic differences here? Yeah, so in a 4-3 defense, which I grew up playing in college football and my first year in the NFL, it's hands in the ground. I'm a defensive end. I had to worry about, like, the power and the line movement and power run, pulling guards, pulling center, you know, a scoop block, down blocks, you know, guys trying to push you out, fullback coming down. So those line progressions, I can do it with my eyes closed. Yeah. But when you move one level back into the linebacker position, you have to drop into coverage. You have to figure out what the hook to curl is and what location is going to be, where the route depths are going to go. Hey, he's running an in route. What depth is he running that in route so you can jump in front or underneath or you got you know, understanding like force. Oh, who has this? Cover three, cover two, cloud force. The corner has the outside edge. You're not responsible for that. So these things is unfamiliar to a defensive yeah. lineman. You're like, yeah. wait, what? <laughs> so you're trying to play football and process all of this stuff, and these guys are running four threes and yeah. coming at you really fast. And you're, you're thinking <laughs> and trying to move fast. You know, I wasn't slow. I ran a four, five, nine, but I'm trying to process all of that. And that was like, yeah. yo, this is, this, is, <laughs> this is a lot. You know what I mean? Wow. Um, and so, you know, I struggled, but I eventually got it. There's a coach who's a defensive, uh, excuse me, outside linebacker coach, Greg Minuski. Went on to become a DC for the uh, for the Commanders for a very long time, um, but he taught me football, which helped me get into sports broadcasting. Had he never taught me that and spend that time investing in teaching me, um, I don't know that I would even had an opportunity to get into sports broadcasting because I didn't know the game like I thought I knew. So. Did I call D Lyman's dumb? No. But <laughs> they have the on defense, they have the right. least responsibility yeah. when it comes yeah. to the overall scheme. If, if you're a dog, all you gotta do is go beat that lineman in front of you and get to the court. That's it. That's all you gotta worry <laughs> about. You, you didn't call him dumb, you implied it, let's be real, that they're not picking up on the implication. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, at Bart. Yeah. During your time at San Diego, San Diego State, with you know, you know, while you're while you were at San Diego State, did that help you in any way prepare for your career as a broadcaster? You know what? No, not really. Um, but I think what it did was intro me to um, something that I knew I was going to have interest in. It's funny because graduating with a degree in communications and emphasis in new media studies, mm -hmm. nothing I did at San Diego State prepared me for what it is. It's like the evolution of broadcast had changed. Like there was no internet. Oh, there's internet, but there was no YouTube and streaming and all that stuff. That was not a thing, you know what I mean? So everything right. I learned about, I still remember learning about the the, the red and the blue, the green and, you know, the, the bars and, you know, all this different stuff mm -hmm. and signals. And I'm like, that stuff doesn't apply today. So yeah. it's moved yeah. so fast that it just was antiquated. And not that San Diego State, San Diego State is a great education, right. but that just lets you know how fast things have moved from, because there's a time that I spent that five year period mm -hmm. playing in the NFL. So right. by the time I got out of the NFL, everything I had learned in college didn't apply anymore. It was, it was back, done. And, and then while you are in college back then, you, you didn't have social media platforms no. like X or Instagram or no. Twitter. You did you have know? MySpace. You didn't have MySpace, you MySpace. You didn't have, yeah. Or Facebook for that matter. Yeah. No, Facebook was not a, not a thing. Yeah. So, American Ninja Warrior. Yeah. I know it's obviously different than NFL athletes, but what are some similarities and some differences? Because, I mean, the absolute strength these guys have, I've, I've had a friend who tried to train for it and just – it blows my mind. Yeah. I'm like, this guy's out here looking like Darren Sproul. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can you talk more about the American Ninja Warrior? Because I, I always find this fascinating to watch. Yeah, I think the commonality between the American Ninja Warrior athletes and the NFL athletes, I probably will say short-term memory. 
mm. and the ability to, to adjust. And when I say short-term memory, meaning when something goes bad or something goes wrong, you have to forget it and keep moving forward. Right. And so th they might have struggled on the obstacle before. Mm. If they get in their heads about that, going into the next obstacle, they're going to fail. Yeah. Same thing, you missed a catch and you're still thinking about the last catch that you right. dropped going into the next play. Like you gotta, okay, it's done with. I did it, yeah. I'm gonna improve, yeah. it's done. A lot of people don't have that ability. Mm -hmm. Some people like, like to wallow in their mistakes and wallow in that. Yeah. So it's like, keep pushing. Right. Uh, I think the other thing is, you know, like to me, which is, is critical, is problem solving. Yeah. Being able to problem solve. Ninja Warrior, these athletes are coming out there and seeing obstacles for the very first time, and they have to problem solve on the fly. What happens when, you know, in Kansas City, they give Brock Purdy a different look that he has not seen before. Yikes. That ball snaps, he's got to make adjustments. Yep. So my coach used to always say, um, sudden change, sudden yeah. change. And we used to actually train and prepare for sudden change. What happens when you're in the middle of the game and there's a sudden change? How do you respond? That right there is the making of a great athlete, the ability to adjust and adapt to sudden change. Final question here, Malcolm. Final question for you, Atbar. Is there a contestant on American Ninja Warrior that would make it in the NFL? Oh, no. No, and the only reason why is because it's not a contact sport. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. If you get somebody 265 pounds, like that happened to me when I was with the Chargers and the Seattle Seahawks, and I had a guy coming he, this dude ran a 4-4, he was 260 pounds, 6'3", and was running full speed. He hit me so hard, it mm -hmm. literally bent my face mask. This is iron. Nope. And that's <laughs> when I knew, I mean, that's when I knew, I was like, oh shoot, my, this game is changing. Because when I came out, I ran a 4-5-9, that was considered fast. Yeah. For my size, they're like, damn, you ran a 4-5-9, like my goodness. Yes. And these guys were getting heavier and faster, I'm like, you know, that's just simple math when you go, yo, like it takes force, I mean, it takes mass to move mass. Mm -hmm. Well, mass plus speed at that for that, that, that equals chaos. <laughs> that, <laughs> that equals chaos. And so, no, I don't think any of the guys are the Ninja Warrior. And that's not a knock to the athleticism. It's just you hit one of those guys, they're going to break. Yeah. Akbar, really appreciate the time. Everyone, check out Experian. Yep. Make sure you go. Oh, oh, oh sorry. sorry. Yeah, other don't, side, other don't, side. Don't, don't be trying to get my don't, don't, don't go try getting this card now. Come on now. Experian boost. 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 Boost, baby. Yep. Hey, thank you so much. Right. RB Jamila, yep. thanks for joining us today. Thank really you so much. Appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks, have a good one. Thanks, man. Right. Hey, take it easy. All right. Take it easy, Al Bar. Right, thank you. You're welcome. I think we're going to get a picture with you. That was great. That was so much fun. That was fun. That guy thank does so everything. Wow. That guy for me, for does for everything. everything. Wow. Thank you, so much. you think he could do American Ninja Warrior? I would have to give it a shot. I believe in you. I, I would have to give it a shot. I think I could do it. You know, you know, it's a lot of training. You know, and I am an athlete, so you know, so especially yeah. when we do have to train when we play a certain sport. So it's like, like basketball. I'm running up and down the court, basically. You know, doing, uh, doing suicides. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah, the worst. Yeah, suicides. We were oh suicides, man. Like, like. Like during, like during practice, we gotta do suicides. We have to do layup drills. We have to do, um, we have to. We're playing full court, up and down, five on five. It's like it's physical. Yeah, man. And you have to be able to take the brunt of the punishment. You know, when you're out on the court, you know, like you know, you you know, you can get bumped. You can basically get hurt. You know, it's just, it's like I said, Sterling. You have to be able to take the brunt of the punishment. Yeah, uh, that's not me. I, I'm, I'm not taking the uh, the brunt of the punishment. That, that's that, that's not my style, Malcolm. It's not your style. I, I think American Ninja Warrior might be more my speed than uh, going over the middle or getting hit by uh, by Akbar. Now, now let's say you let's say you're on A and W, right? A and W root beer? No, A and W American American Ninja Warrior, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's a say you're w, yeah. on there, and you're you're doing the obstacle course. Would you be able to? Would you be able to, to to finish every single part of that course? No, zero chance I could, Malcolm. Zero chance zero I could. Chance? Yes. But guess what we have right now, Malcolm? Oh yes, we have Saquon Barkley and Tommy DeVito. Yeah. 
We are here, unified coverage of the Super Bowl with Special Olympics and fan sided. Joined now yeah, by two Giants. Mike. Saquon <laughs> wants the mic. Saquon wants it, and they're brought to you uh, with Marriott Bonvoy to give two members the ultimate VIP weekend at Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. Today? We're doing great. I'm, I'm doing great. How you doing, Tommy? I'm doing good. I'm blessed to be here with my man. It's my man's birthday today. Happy birthday, birthday Saquon. Saquon. Thank you so much. Birthday, birthday in Vegas. Vegas yeah. How Tommy. Tommy, you, you taking him out or? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to get some dinner. We'll have a good time. Nice. <laughs> awesome. All right, what do you guys do with Marriott? So uh, yesterday, actually, with Marriott, we had, uh, they had two winners come out, and we played golf. Thanks to my coach over here. I was, I was a little eh, but uh, he was holding it down, and uh, it was a good time. We had two people come out, and we just it was a great time. Minus the wind. It was a little windy yesterday, but besides that, we had a really good time. <laughs> it was an ultimate VIP uh, experience. Uh, it was fun to, to get out there with the, with the members. Um, it was a good way to introduce the golf season. I don't think any of us uh, were shooting a, a, a record low, um, <laughs> but we had fun. We had a blast, and um, yeah, anytime you can go out there on a golf course, it was a beautiful golf course, and just spend quality time uh, with those members, it was, it was special. Do you both have a favorite uh, course you play? My favorite golf course? I would probably say for me, I played a lot of really good. Uh, Liberty's the first one that come to my mind, uh, just because of the view of the city. Um, so I'll, I'll go with Liberty. What about you, Tommy? I'm not a giant golfer, but I'll tell you what: the course that we went to yesterday was pretty dope. It was in the middle <laughs> of the desert. First of all, it popped up in the middle of nowhere. They had the mountains in the background with like the snow on top. I was like, yeah, I don't nice. see that in Jersey. So that was that was a cool experience. At the NFL Honors last night, you did that little that little sketch right there with uh, Keegan Michael Key. How was that? What, what, the good fellas. I can hold it, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can hold that one. Bad, you can hold that one. He's no. not used to handing the, the handing it off. I know. I see. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was an awesome experience. Um, that's somebody that you know I've kind of grew up watching. You know all the skits, all the funny stuff they were doing. Yeah. You know, I always think about the substitute teacher thing. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so when they brought the idea to me uh, a couple days ago, I was like, yeah, I'm game. I kind of ran through it, and then it was just it was just fun and easy. He's a really cool dude. He's someone that I kind of I uh, was happy to meet, I'll say, because, you know, I don't know if I'm going to run into him again. So it was just a really cool overall experience. Yeah. Yeah, let's transition back to football. Um, Tommy, I mean, uh, Saquon, uh, you can answer this one. What makes Tommy such a great leader on and off the field? Uh, I would say just his swagger and confidence. It's rare to see, you know, a rookie um, at any level. But just think about an undrafted quarterback that is just thrown into the fire. And the second he got into the huddle, you could just feel his confidence. You could just feel his swagger. And when you have that, you know, you, you want to rally behind a guy like that. And we're able to streak some wins together. And uh, it was a fun. It was it was fun to be a part of it. And I think he showed that, you know, he, he might have been undrafted, but he's here to stay. He has, he has a lot of talent. And I believe he could, he could be a future starting quarterback in, in the league. Yeah, Tommy, what, what was that like for you? I mean, the first couple of games, you were thrown in the fire. And then all of a sudden, you hear some stuff on the media, you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And then you take off. You had a great stretch to end the year. What was it like when you first got the starting quarterback nod and the transition from, uh, again, how you got better as the season went on? Yeah, the transition was easy, honestly, just because of guys like Say, a lot of the veterans in the locker room that kind of, you know, supported me and told me like they had my back. Like, yeah, I like to think like I have a good amount of confidence and swagger, which I think is needed at the quarterback position. But at the same time, like to have guys like Saquon Barkley and yeah. all the vets like Dex in the locker room, just like, you know, let it no be known that they have your back, just lets you go out and play with that much confidence. And then obviously when you have some some positives going on in the field, everything just grows off of that and everything rallies around it. But, you know, it's all a uh, testament to those guys. And, and this guy, the ball makes my job a lot easier. <laughs> Helps the defense soften up a little bit for the past game. So I appreciate it for that. But, um, yeah, it's all a testament to the guys in the locker room. Justin Pugh had a pretty fun story about your confidence level yesterday. In the, you guys were both in the practice squad together when he originally signed. And he goes, typically they're all reserved, and he's the leader because he's been the veteran. And he goes, no, man, Tommy had that thing going. Tommy came up. He was automatically the leader. Everyone just looked right towards you. That was kind of cool. Yeah, it's cool. Justin Pugh's a really cool dude. Uh, you know, this is my obviously first time meeting him, but he's been in the league for a long time for a reason, obviously. And he has just – that veteran, I think that's what helped the offense and the team, especially like when he was became a part of the team. I think that helped the offense propel just because that gave the offensive line a guy to look up to. That really old guy that's really been in the league for a while and just has that standard at all times. So I think that that helped the group and especially for me. Like all he talks about on the scout team, we can talk about that. He's like, it all starts with the break. As soon as you break the huddle, it all starts with the break. He talks about it all the time. Like you break that huddle confidence, everybody's on the same page. That's so like that's just one step in the right direction. So it all starts with the break.
Do you both have a memorable moment playing together this season? I do. Uh, for me, uh, we had a, we had a, we were playing Washington, and we had a play uh, design where I kind of had like a double move, and I've been, I've been, uh, I've been asking for that for so long, and I just remember looking at him, and I'm like, hey, bro, look off the safety, hold the safety for me, and he looks at me like, what it looked like. Like, do you think, like, what do you think of me? Like, he was like, bro, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Don, to. Yeah, so that's the exact same play that I'm thinking about. So it goes back to during camp, actually. It actually worked out kind of perfect. Going back to camp, I, you know, I was the three. I would throw to the running backs and tight ends while, you know, DJ and Ty would throw to the receivers. So, like, all of my reps would be with the running backs, tight ends. So we would throw that route all the time <laughs> throughout <laughs> camp. So as soon as they called it, yeah, we did yeah, one on one reps every time. So as soon as they called it, I'm like, oh, it's up. I'm like, say, just roll. He was like, trust me. I was like, bro, I'm trusting you. You're putting it up. As soon as they called the play, touchdown. It was like, perfect how it ended. But that, that was my favorite play of the season. Awesome. Uh, Saquon, I knew you grew up a Jets fan. So what was it like when the Giants drafted you? Were you, were you I mean, you can't be bummed. You're going to the NFL. But still, it's a little bit of like a, dang, that's the, that's yeah. the wrong team in New York. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't be mad because, um, I was the number two pick of the NFL yeah, draft. Yeah, you can't be um, bummed. The, Gi- the Jets were three. I don't know if they would have would have taken me if the Giants didn't. But uh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun uh, being a growing up being a Jets fan. My dad's a super Jets, super big Jets fan. When we play the Jets, my dad wears a Jets jersey. Oh, uh, he oh, roots for wow. his son, though. Obviously, oh. um, but. Sadly, Tom, that means he's rooting against you. He's rooting for his son. Like. <laughs> sadly, sadly. As a Jets fan growing up, there was a lot of times where the Jets weren't good and not even in the playoffs and the Giants would be in the playoffs. So when the Jets were in the playoffs, I would root for the other New York team. So I, I end up being in New York, uh, which is which is a dream come true. Hey, Tommy, I want to ask you, how did you choose your run out music to the Sopranos? And are you a super fan of the show? I did not choose the music. I didn't even know that was going to happen until <laughs> until it did happen. Um, so yeah, I was, I don't know, whoever chose that, I thought it was kind of funny, but yeah, I am a fan of the Sopranos. Um, I've watched it multiple times over and over. The Sopranos house is right next to mine, right down the street, so that's kind of that. Have you watched the Sopranos? I've never watched it. That's just a show, right? Oh man, he's signing hard, Saquon. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll get him right. Don't even worry about gonna, it. He's going to show we're gonna, you. We're going to yeah. get him right. We're gonna get yeah. <laughs> when you look forward to next year, what are you guys most excited about? For you, obviously, going into your second year, but there's a little uncertainty there. We'll see what, what goes on, the quarterback position. But for you guys playing again, another season under your belt, um, I think there's a lot of expectations going next year with the Giants. Um, what's this look like for you guys? Yeah, so um, for me, I'm kind of treating it just how I did last year. You know, a lot of uncertainty. Not sure what's going to happen. The only thing I can do is keep my head down and work. And, you know, when the opportunity presents itself, just go out there and just try to do my best, enjoy it, have fun, just be myself. That's really it because you never know what's going to happen. They can go draft somebody, don't draft somebody. I mean, I don't know. I don't make any of those decisions. I'm just here, play ball, do your thing, and that's that. Yeah, kind of the same boat. Um, control what I can control. Uh, always have the right mindset uh, and work hard, you know, push others, and, you know, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. What were what were your thoughts on your season as a rookie, Tommy? And uh, is there some things you could work on? Yeah, of course. Uh, there's so many ups and downs um, throughout it. Obviously, it all happened fast. Kind of got thrown into it, but you know it was in a good way. Um, there's so many things like that I've just been watching film on. It's like so many little things that I can correct, but at the same time, it was like. There was just so much going on. I was like, I was just trying to take stuff in from everywhere as right. well as like be the lead. You know? There's just a million things going on, which is kind of like at the time, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm there. But like now that I've had a time to step away and reflect and really see, you know, how everything went down and how I was playing, um, there's certainly a tremendous amounts to be able to clean up. But um, yeah, I think it was, a, it, was a, it was a decent start. So we got Tommy Cutlets. <clears throat> what, what, what's your go-to nickname for Saquon? Say. Say? Let's say, yeah. Quadzilla. Tiger nah. Woods. <laughs> I've never heard that one. I've never heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> but if we're ever on the course again, that one's going to come out. <laughs> hey, Woods. Saquon, Tommy, Saquon, really appreciate Tommy. it. Man. I will, really I will, say, I will say yesterday, the first drive of the day, really we you. lost the ball. That ball went. <laughs> Tommy and Saquon, really appreciate you guys uh, hopping on today. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Hey, and thank you again to Marriott Bonvoy. Again, the ultimate VIP experience right there. And thank you, guys. happy birthday again, Saquon. Happy birthday, Saquon. Fun birthday in Vegas, huh? Don't uh, 
Don't do what I did last night. Right. Don't, don't, don't lose on the blackjack table. Nah, do <laughs> <laughs> you guys are smart. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, Tommy great. and uh, Saquon were fun to talk to, uh, Sterling. They were fun. They were awesome, man. They were awesome. They were fun. Uh, I think they liked Tiger Woods, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty good one right there. That is a pretty good one, uh, Sterling. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I don't know what I did. That, that might be one that gets busted out in the, in the team locker room, right. Tiger Woods. You know, Tiger Woods. If you yeah, don't like yeah, that yeah. nickname. Well, you yeah. got it. Man. I can't believe it's his birthday. Yeah, I can't believe it's I, I didn't. I was shocked you didn't start singing to him. Yeah. Why didn't you? I just, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I felt like, you know, just saying happy birthday, you know, was, was, was the better segue, you know? Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Could be. Could just wish you happy birthday. You know, I, I, do you have a good singing voice, Malcolm? Yeah, I do. You do have a good singing voice? I do. What's your go-to song to sing? Happy birthday to See, you. See, you could have done it. You could have sang you. that. How are y'all doing? What's good? good? How, How are you Steve? doing? Nice to see y'all. Nice to see hey, you, Steve. Yeah. Sit down. I don't want to trip on any wires here. Oh, you're golden. Don't catch me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, he, he's in front of me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we got Steve Avila jump, jumping on Sag in the Box right yeah. now. Yeah. How you doing today, Steve? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Uh, so are you promoting anything out here? I wish I was. No. <laughs> promoting Steve, <laughs> no, baby. I probably could have, but I just, you know, wanted to be present, you wanna, know, here. Want to talk so. some ball. Yeah, That's let's do it, man. Let's do so, it. So, you are. Obviously, you played at TCU. You started every game your rookie season this year with the uh, with the Chargers. What was or with the Rams? I, excuse me. What, what was it like being the only guy to play every single offensive snap this season? Yeah, I mean that was definitely it was one of my goals. You know, uh, going in to at least leave a mark. You yeah. know, my rookie season. Um, I knew what was expected out of me uh, when I got drafted. Yeah. So um, it definitely means a lot. I mean, I. I played a lot of ball I've learned a lot I've done a lot this year um, and hopefully I can you know build off of that next year do, do you plan to stay at left guard obviously I mean you moved around a lot especially mm -hmm. in college as well is that where you're most comfortable or you're kind of like a uh, I mean it, honestly it's really dictated off of what I did last like sure um, when yeah. I my, when I was coming off the year of playing center I would have said center was my you know sure. so sure. I mean I always like to do what's asked of me I never have any gripes so I'll do what's asked of me yeah. <laughs> so yeah at TCU <clears throat> transitioning from, from from when you played at TCU to the Rams what was that toughest transition oh man uh just the speed of the game I guess you know people always talk about that mm -hmm. um but you don't really realize it until <laughs> you're going against Aaron Donald yeah. so, <laughs> um it's so funny because one of the first practices that I went against him I, I got spanked and <laughs> I, in my head I'm like if this is anything of what I'm going against yeah I'm yeah. in trouble <laughs> but I mean you know what comes with practice I mean you start learning things and I feel like that's what happened this year um I've learned a lot from going against him and Kobe Turner yeah. who I felt yeah. like we both you know have gotten better as the season went on so yeah. Who, who's the toughest guy you had to block this year? You know, a lot, of people, a lot of people. A lot of people <laughs> ask me that, and it's it's tough to say because I feel like everybody gave me their like different problems. Sure. I, I always say that I um I had tough groups to go against. Yeah. Like I think one of our worst games was going against Dallas. Okay. That yeah. game gave me like mental problems afterwards. <laughs> it's one of those like where you look at the mirror, like, do I suck? You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, you talk about having you know mental toughness. That's when you have to start bouncing back because uh, I think the next game we went against the Packers. Yeah. And at least for a quarter, I was like, I had to get back into the groove of, you know, not being so timid with what I was doing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. What advice do you have for, for college athletes that are, you know, that are getting, you know, that, that, are, that are going to uh, come, you know, get, you know, come into the NFL? What advice would you have mm -hmm. for those, uh, you know, like high school to mm -hmm. college athletes? Yeah. I mean, you got to stay on the grind. I mean, a lot of people think of NFL and they start thinking of money. Yeah. Um, that is one of the last yeah. things that I thought about. I mean, you have to put in the work to get here. Um, and, you know, what comes with being on a team is the money. And you have to be on a team first. Yeah. yeah. So um, I don't want people to get, you know, cloudy with, oh, I'm projected to go here or there. You know, you got to put in the work, you know. To, and even high school to college, you yeah. know, it's yeah. the same exact thing. So, yeah. What, what was it like at TCU? You were on that great team down there. Mm -hmm. um, obviously with Max, uh, Quentin. Yeah. Um, what was that like? Again, I, I'm a Mizzou guy, a Mizzou mm -hmm. alum. Okay. So I root for the 
not Bama's, the yeah. non-Georgia's, Ohio State's, you know, yeah, like, yeah. We'll, we'll take that tier down, uh -huh. but, but it's awesome seeing the success. What was that season like for you? Uh, it definitely meant a lot to me. Um, there was a period of time where if I would talk about it, I'd probably start tearing up. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I was there for five years. I've seen a lot. I mean, a lot of adversity hit the people that I was with. Um, and for the last year, a lot of the guys that were going to graduate, graduate decided to come back. Yeah. And that just showed me how dedicated they were yeah. to putting their all into this last season. And I feel like that's what happened. Um, you know, it was a very emotional time, you know, for all of us just to know how much we've been through right. and to do what we did just means a lot to me. So, yeah. Man, Steve, what, Steve, which player or coach was the most instrumental in helping you adjust to and excel in the NFL mm -hmm. this year? Uh, I wouldn't really point out one guy, and I know I've said that a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah. sorry. But, but it's, no, it's, true. It, it, it's true. I mean, it was a collective group. I mean, because we, we drafted 14 rookies, so mm -hmm. all of us needed to contribute, and I felt like the offensive line that we had, they you know all took me under their wing. They gave me advice and all that stuff, and I just feel like we have such a great coaching staff that everybody, yeah. you know, I have no complaints with anybody, and they, they've definitely put us all in position to succeed. What's Sean McVay like as obviously just an offensive mind? I mean, mm -hmm. he, he's very unique, and we've seen time and time again different iterations of the Rams with Sean McVay, McVay there at least. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some offensive, success, offensive mm -hmm. success. What does he ask of an offensive lineman? Uh, he just wants to be on the same page. It's such a – I've never – like, he, one of the best coaches I've been I've been with. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've been in the league one year. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't really mean – yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, but um, no, it's just he – loves to collaborate with everybody like it's an open floor when we're in walkthrough he asks people hey what do you think about this and i just feel like that that's such an amazing thing to have as a player you know because he wants to get everybody's insight on how things are done so um he knows so much and he knows what's best for all of us offensively mm -hmm. and i feel like that's why we had a lot of su success i want to ask you like playing at sofi stadium what's that you know what's that um atmosphere like at sofi I mean, uh, it's I, amazing so my first time playing in sofi i got yeah. blown out 60 to like seven <laughs> in the national championship yeah, right. so um you know i got drafted i tried i the one thing i told myself that i'm never gonna let that happen again <laughs> but um it's it's an amazing stadium i mean it is obviously newer but i i honestly think it's one of the most beautiful stadiums there we have such awesome fans that make that environment just such amazing um, I, I always take pictures every time I'm on the field before the game starts yeah. uh, just to have memories of it. So, yeah. I would love to go to a game out in SoFi, out in Inglewood. I've always wanted I've always wanted to go to a Rams mm -hmm. home game. I need to experience one. It, it will just be phenomenal. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's on my bucket list of stadiums to go to. Oh, for sure. I, and because it, it looks amazing, mm -hmm. you know, just seeing it. I mean, when you watch, you know, when, when I'm watching you guys, you know, back home in Florida, I'm like watching you guys, you know, just the, the stadium is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. When we have our, when we I think we played Thursday against the Saints. That was probably the best. It was Thursday night. That yeah. was probably the best atmosphere. So if you do catch a game and you got to catch a night game, it <laughs> yeah. was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. I loved that. That'd be fun. Yeah, I loved it. What's it like blogging for Matt Stafford? I mean, he's such a unique quarterback with mm -hmm. some of the arm angles as well. I know he's not the most mobile guy, but I think for the most part, unlike Mahomes, Mahomes, <laughs> you have no idea where he's going to yeah, be. Yeah, Lamar, for sure. no idea where, mm -hmm. what that drop's going to be like. Yeah. Stafford, you might have a little more understanding. Has that helped you, your rookie season as well? Yeah, I mean, he know he's played a lot of – I mean, I, I'd never say this out loud, but I watched him when I was like 11. Yeah. And I just think that's, <laughs> that's so crazy. Um, but one of the things that I told myself, when I first got there is I do not want to get this guy hurt. Like it would physically hurt me internally yeah. Yeah. to get this guy hurt. And um, I did a pretty good job of, of not. Yeah. Like, yeah there was did. a couple times and I do have a story that I probably won't share because it is pretty long. But um, <laughs> well, you got time. If you if you want to have some fun with it, <laughs> yeah, have some fun with this. <laughs> if you want to have some fun, Steve, yeah. we're here. Okay. We're here. All right. Y'all want to hear the story? Let's hear it. Let's All right. Hear it. It's Absolutely. kind of embarrassing, but it's pretty funny. But so we played the Seahawks the second time. We yeah. installed this play. Um, that USC ran that, that week before. It yeah, was a trick yeah. play, and it takes forever. <laughs> I think it's a handoff to the receiver. The receiver turns back, throws yeah. it to the quarterback, and then he chucks it downfield. But um, before we ran that play, some stuff happened on the other sideline where one of our guys got body slammed. So I ran all the way over Ooh. there, and I'm just talking to them, <laughs> letting them have it. So the next play, we run the, the trick play, and – a lot of stuff happened, and you have to block forever. Yeah. And ultimately, what ended up happening is someone had came around, and my guy, of course, of course, 
absolutely obliterated <laughs> Matthew. And I felt so bad. When you talk about, like, how I just told you, yeah. I felt so bad because he threw an interception, too. Mm. And then mm. after me talking mess, yeah. all the, all the <laughs> players came to me. <laughs> and then uh, I'm walking off, and I was, on the, I was on the bench. I'm like, dude, I feel like crap. And um, that's just, I mean, it's a motivator for me. I want to feel like that. Yeah. So, um, you know, I try my best to, to keep that guy clean. Well, I'll say you had, a, you had a run so far, you were tired. No, 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 no. That was the last thing. That was the last thing. That was the last thing. If y'all see the play, y'all are going to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but. Matthew Stafford, Steve, I want to get you out of here on this. What makes Matthew Stafford such a great leader on and off the field? Oh, man, he's again, like, you know, he's played a lot of ball. I mean, he knows what it takes. He yeah. has a Super Bowl, <laughs> yeah. Bowl ring. He's been on the Super Bowl team. And um, when you have that kind of leadership of, of someone who can command and, and lead people, you're going you're to have a good team. So I've been fortunate enough uh, to be blessed around a bunch of guys like that, especially him. Uh, I don't think I'd want anybody else back there but him. So, yeah. Is it uh, as an offensive lineman, when you're getting drafted, I don't know if you think of this at all. The Rams, mm -hmm. obviously, they throw the ball a lot. Obviously, the emergence of Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup. We know offensive linemen typically like to uh, run block, mm -hmm. right? So I think some guys are like, yeah, put me in Tennessee. Yeah, yeah put, put, put me in New England. I want to run 80% yeah, yeah, of the time. Yeah. What, what's, the, what's your thoughts on run block versus pass block difference, the, the change from college to the NFL in this, the nuances here? Um, yeah. Um, I feel like for run blocking, I feel like pass. I feel like pass blocking is the hardest transition yeah. because, I mean, with run blocking, that's just pure brute force. You yeah. know what I mean? You can have some big six, seven dude just run through someone. Um, <laughs> it takes technique, but not as much technique as yeah. uh, pass blocking. There's a lot of different stuff. It's an art. It literally is. Yeah. And when you actually watch, it's a fight. It's, yeah. You think of boxing. That's exactly what it is. And there's a lot of different things that offensive linemen can do that just shows you like their technique. And that's the one, the best thing about playing offensive line. So I do feel like uh, pass blocking is, is a big difference, you know, from college to um, NFL. I'm trying to get every offensive lineman on board with this. It started off as a joke, and now I want it to be serious. Fantasy football for offensive linemen. <laughs> okay, I want, because I, I want, I, I, you, I get tired sometimes of Matt, and I get tired of fantasy football. You're like, this guy, this guy, this guy. I'm like, but what about the trenches? What about yeah, the offensive yeah. line? We got to give him some love. I don't know what stat like we yeah. could possibly yeah. have. Like, I mean, you could have like pancakes and like knockdowns and stuff. There could be loss. there could be something that you could come up like times the guy was held yeah. in front. Of you. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> how you know long? What they, mean? How, how many held, seconds he held? Yeah. Up? yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You'd think that that would happen. I feel like that would definitely put a lot of us in a position to have as much publicity yes. as a receiver or a running back. Um, and I was thinking about this the other day. I mean, I feel like Jason Kelsey has done a good job. He's done a great job. <laughs> with marketing job. for offensive yeah. linemen. Yeah. So that's definitely the goal. You know, I feel like a lot of offensive linemen have different personalities. So, you know, hopefully that will happen. Yeah. Well, if Mitchell, you, uh, uh, go ahead. very quickly, very quickly, I'm sorry. Because for Kansas City, Mitchell Schwartz, right? Mm -hmm. This is kind of how the idea populated. Five-time All-Pro, yeah. never made a Pro Bowl. In my opinion, one of the best right tackles of all time. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't get the publicity, especially right. nationally, and, mm -hmm. it, and it makes me upset by that. Yeah. So this is how the idea came about. So because of Mitchell Schwartz, I'm trying to start. <laughs> oh, no, for line. sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm, look, I got you got to do your best to get your personality out there. Yeah. Um, and I try to showcase that on the field <laughs> yeah. sometimes. So, um, yeah. Did you have anything? Yeah, I want to I want to ask one other thing real quick before mm -hmm. you head out, um, Steve. If you had one NFL legend that you would love to go up against, who would that be? Oh my gosh, that is a good question. Ah, uh, um, I know I keep bringing up Aaron Donald. That's not my answer, but that it's I'm telling you, it's been such a blessing going against you know yeah. someone like him. So um, I don't know. That's. <laughs> Maybe, I mean, I know he plays defensive end. Maybe Michael Strahan. Yeah. yeah. That would be cool, you know. Um, I feel like <laughs> me and Joe Green. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to see how much the game, how different the game was, yeah. you know, back then. Uh, you know, I can't really think of anybody right now, but, I mean, those two guys, it would definitely be awesome, you know, going against those two guys. Steven Vila, guard for the <laughs> L.A. Rams. Thanks for, ha thanks for your time today, Steve. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Hey, I definitely thanks, had some fun, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank Thanks, you guys. Steve. Great stuff. Thanks Thank you, guys. Up. Awesome. Yeah. Steve Avila, guard for the, the LA Rams. Rams. 14 rookies last year. Yeah. They had success. He's a, a big reason why, again, it's, yeah. it's a big reason. I mean, large human being Steve, Steve is. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, Good. man. Awesome, yes. Right, awesome. Man. I appreciate you guys. Thanks, dude. Absolutely. Take it easy, man. Take it easy. Appreciate it. I mean, that's fun. Good for Steve. I, I love talking with offensive linemen. I'm not I kidding love, I about... I love talking offensive linemen, too. I'm not, I'm not even... And I'm so glad I got that question. I am, too. That's a great question. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. When, when it comes to fantasy football for offensive line, I'm now seriously considering trying to start this. Seriously considering... Let me ask you the same question I asked Steve. If there was... If, if you could only pick one NFL legend, who would you go up against? Who would I go up against? Yeah. Oh, man. I want to play defensive end and go around uh, Willie Rolfe because I know I couldn't do it. Wouldn't matter. Yeah. Uh, guys, we have breaking news. Breaking news. Huge news. The biggest news might be bigger than the Super Bowl itself. We have now reached $1,000. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Patrick, come here. Show your face. Patrick Allen. Patrick now has show to your face. Tattoo Joker now. <laughs> we can't hear you. We can't hear you, Patrick. Speak up, speak up, speak you, you, you do, you know, talking for a living. You think you know how speak microphones up, Patrick, work. I would challenge all of you to put yourselves out there for a good cause, like Special Olympics. Even if it means you have to get a tattoo of some kind, yeah. of some size, on your body. Uh, thank no seriously though, you guys are unbelievable. Thank you to everybody that donated. That's really cool. Don't stop now. Keep it coming. I'm not going to make any more promises because I've learned a, a very valuable lesson. Uh, but it's pretty awesome of you guys to rally around what we're doing here. I know it means a lot to everybody at Special Olympics, us here at Fanside, and I know Malcolm as well. Uh, so thank you, everybody. You guys are the best. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ST, STP. Thank you, STP, so much. This is awesome. Yeah. This is awesome. This is amazing. We started off as a um, funny idea. Yeah. Malcolm. It became a brilliant idea. Great cause. Great cause. Great cause. What was that? Thanks to th the Thunderbirds. Th thank you to the Thunderbirds. Thank, thank you honestly. to the Thunderbirds. Yeah, thank was, you, Thunderbirds, very much. That was that was amazing. Without them, yeah, the without idea them never would have hatched. Happened. Would have you know, would have came through the woodwork. And now we have it, Malcolm. A thousand dollars later. Yes. Donated for the Special Olympics. Yes. And Patrick, the man. man. I don't know if you're a myth. But you are a legend. He is a legend. I'm proud of you. Proud of you, Patrick. When, when is, we can't hear you again, you have the microphone. Uh, it's okay, I can say whatever I want because you can't re refute <laughs> what I'm saying right now. Uh, when's this gonna happen, by the way? When yeah, is the actual- when are you gonna get that tattoo? He is saying TBD, baby on the way. That sounds like an excuse. Uh, I don't like excuses, guys. I actually just like results. Okay, he's sounding a lot like the Eagles last year complaining about the field conditions. Oh. A little bit like the 49ers uh, this <laughs> yes. year complaining about, you oh, the soft in. field. He's got, yeah, two weeks. I, I, I think two weeks needs to be the, uh, the cutoff date on this. Two weeks. He has enough time to get that done in two weeks. Yeah. He says maybe NFL draft shows. Can we live stream this, Patrick? We're live streaming yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's live stream that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, again, thank you guys all for you. Seriously, thank you guys for thank your donations. Thank you guys so much for your donations for Special Olympics. That means a lot. You know, that means a lot to the organization, not just for me as an athlete, but, but to all the athletes out there, you know, that, that, that participate in Special Olympics. That means a lot to us. So thanks so much, guys. Uh, some news around the NFL, Julius Peppers, Dwight Freeney, um, they lead the 2024 Hall of Fame class. Awesome. A lot of guys, um, Dwight Freeney, Patrick Willis, Devin Hester, uh, Andre Johnson, uh, Randy Gratishier, Steve McMichael. Um, really cool, man. You got to see that last night, actually, Malcolm. Yeah. You, you were there and I saw. I was there last night. And uh, NFL honors, the red carpet, like I said last night, sir, was unbelievable. I am and, slightly uh, surprised. It, looks, we, it also looks like that Chris Boomer, um, yeah, Boomer Berman, picked the winner for the Super Bowl. Yeah. He did. He did? He, he, did. Picked, he picked the Chiefs, didn't he? Yes, he did. He picked the yeah. Chiefs. Um, 
I was a little surprised that Devin Hester got in as a return man, right? Uh, yeah. I, I didn't know if there was going to be a special teamer that got in. Now I wonder if it opens a door for a Dante Hall. Hall? If it opens a door for a, honestly, an interesting one, Cordero Patterson that I think yeah. a lot of people don't think about. Right, Cordero Patterson who played for the Vikings and for the Raiders. But but like when you excel in special teams. And also for the for, for the Falcons. Yeah, but I mean, Devin Hester was obviously the greatest return man yeah, of all time. But if Dante Hall was second, if Cordero Patterson's in the top three, I wonder what their odds would be. Right. You know, again, probably fairly slim, but this opens the door. Yeah, it does. There's a crack in the door. Can they slide one foot in? To get that door open, and the great and the kicker Adam Vinatieri is a candidate for, uh, for for the Hall of Fame class of 2025. Yeah, and not many kickers. Two kickers: Morton Anderson, uh, Jan Stinnerud, I believe, are the only two kickers. Yeah, in the NFL Hall of Fame. Yeah, Morton Anderson and Jan Stinnerud. Yeah, you're absolutely correct on that, Sterling. Good, uh, good segue there. Getting ready to be joined now by, by Brandon Stephon Cooks Gil and Stephon Gilmore. Yes, sir. How we doing, fellas? We are doing, 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 doing very, great. very well. Wow. Let's do it. Man, I like your guys' outfits over no, here. I appreciate it. I like those. Nice. I'm, I'm, I'm digging the outfits for both of you guys today. No, I appreciate it. I know you guys are here also with He Gets Us. Yeah, Can yeah, you yeah. talk more about this? Yeah, you know, um, He Gets Us, it's, it's, it's one of those things talking about really loving your neighbor, you know, loving loving those around you. And who is your neighbor? It's not guys, people that look like you, that talk like you, but people that's maybe a little foreign to how you talk, uh, how you look. Um, and that's all it was about, just spreading the love, um, no matter what's going on, no matter what you look like. Um, and I'm just be blessed to be able to be a part of this campaign and kind of display that love to everyone else around me. Brandon and Steph, and Stephon, I want to ask you both, was there a team or a player that was difficult for you guys to go up against this season? In my mind, I don't ever think you know a player too difficult. <laughs> Even if we lose, I don't right. think the team was too difficult. It was just not our best day. That's the right. way that I look at it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, what about yeah, you? I'm, I mean, I'm pretty much the same way. Uh, but I had to give Tyreek Hill his credit. You know, he's uh, he fast, but he um, he fast on film, but he faster. Yeah. In person, so uh, he was a good player. Obviously, with the Bills and Cowboys playing for both teams, what are the differences between those fan bases? Obviously, the Cowboys and even just ownership-wise, Jerry Jones, most involved yeah. owner in the NFL, yeah. a little more hands-on, a little unique. <clears throat> what, what are the biggest differences there? I just think um, you know the Bills fans; they more like you know old school blue collar fans. You know, it's all it. That's all it is to do in Buffalo is be a Buffalo fan. So it ain't much going on. Yeah, you know and. Those fans have been there for years, and I think the Cowboy fans is more, you know, more worldwide. Yeah. And I think, you know, they travel, you know, they, I mean, you may see a Cowboy fan in, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they everywhere. I feel like every every away game we went to, it was like a home game. So yeah. um, they travel well. So um, they, they both have great fan bases. Yeah. If you both had a nickname growing up, what was it? And did your nickname influence the one you have now? Oh. I mean, mine was just Gilly. Gilly Lock. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, really. I mean, that's, that's what it stuck with me the whole way. So that, that was mine. Yeah. What about you, Brandon? Yeah, the Archer. And obviously, you know, it still, it still sticks with me. You're shooting the arrows. Yeah. <laughs> How did that come about? Uh, my faith is my foundation. So, you know, one of my favorite Bible verses, it's, a, it's an opportunity to be able to, you know, give God glory just in a different way. So Psalm 144.6, absolutely. Do you guys go up against each other a lot in practice? And if so, yeah. who wins the majority of those times? So here we go. You're trying to start a problem. You're trying to, <laughs> you're trying to start. No, we have. I mean, obviously, you know, we played in New England together. Um, I remember, like, we was, we was battling a lot there yeah. in practice just because of the way our, our camps and stuff were structured even throughout the year throughout the season um and then obviously playing playing with each other this year this past year uh battling but it's one of those things that you know you get some i'll get some but uh it, it sharpens each other blade that's for sure yeah yeah you both play for the cowboys did you both have a favorite cowboys player growing up for, for me, for, I mean, for me, it was Dion. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because he, growing up, my dad, that's all he talked about. And 
just me seeing, seeing him play. That's one of the reasons I wanted to play cornerback because, you know, he was an elite, as everybody know, and, you know, he was, you know, he was the best at it, so. What about you, Brandon? You know, for me, I grew up a Niner fan, uh, so it was hard for me to like anybody uh, growing <laughs> up from the Cowboys. Uh, but a lot of respect for, obviously, Michael Irvin, Emmitt Spin for the two. Uh, and then Troy, Make Troy Aikman, I got a lot of love for uh, as well. Does that mean you're rooting against the Chiefs? Does that mean you're going Niners? No, 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 no. I'm not rooting for any of this. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in the league now. Once we out the league or whatever, one day, years from now, uh, I'll go back to, uh, you yeah. know, rooting for somebody. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. I, yeah. yeah. Um, when it comes to you guys' success, you've had it everywhere you've gone. I mean, the fact you've had 1,000-yard seasons for all these different teams is absurd to me. You, different schemes, different systems, absurd to me. A lot of times, you know, a guy's great in some system, with some team, they switch, big drop off. Not for you guys. How have you both been able to have so much success anywhere Amen. you guys go? Yeah, uh, work ethic. That's what it comes down to. Uh, being willing to never be out of work uh, and not making any excuses. That's always just been my mindset. No matter who's throwing the ball, go make the play, uh, work hard, um, and be the best that you can be and let everything else, you know, kind of take care of itself. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, just being consistent and, um, you know, not not resting on what you did last year, you know, proving yourself each and every year. And I just think um, just not being one dimensional, you know, being able to play man, zone, whatever. What do you like playing make, better, man or zone? I mean, I like man, yeah. but um, zone here and there it depends on the down and distance. But like I said, some guys one dimensional and I just try to, you know, have an overall game and, so I can play in any system. If you okay, you had okay. So if you had a dream team of NFL legends, you would build around. Who would those NFL legends be? A quarterback. Yeah, quarterback. Each possession. Uh, got. Whew, going. Gotta go. Oh, gotta go. Joe Montana or Brady. Uh, receivers. Yeah. Uh, I'm going. Uh, Randy Moss mm -hmm. and Steve Smith got to be on there. Yep. Um, running back, I'm going Walter Payton. Um, running back, Walter Payton, tight end. I'm going, uh, woo, that's a tough one. I'm going either Gronk or Tony Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. uh, left tackle, Trent Williams. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or Laramie Tunsil. And uh, put who I'm putting in the slot. Yeah. <laughs> sure. yeah. yeah. Slot receivers. Slot? Yeah. Uh, I got to, ooh. ooh. I got to put. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Uh, now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have to pass it and let him go defense. <laughs> what about you, uh, Stefan? Defense? Yeah. We got to, where You're, are we going first? Uh, uh, linebackers. Linebacker no linebacker. Going Ray Lewis. Yards. Yep. I got to lane three linebackers, huh? Yeah. Uh, Ray Lewis, I'm going. Um, nah. Um, Malcolm, you put him on the spot here. Yeah. Patrick, Patrick, Willis. <laughs> I did. Patrick Willis. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Um, I need a cover linebacker. Who we got? Uh, I'm going, go to DB. Go to DB. Go to DB. Go I'm going to DB. <laughs> okay, safety, Ed Reed, free. Yeah. And I'm going strong safety. Yep. I'm going uh, Brian Dawkins. Yeah. And then corner, yep. I'm going Dion. Mm -hmm. Other corner, I'm going Champ Bailey. Awesome. In the, in the nickel, I'm going uh, Rondé Barber. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and then who we got? Dion. That's it. I got to get some Dion. I got to get some pass rush. Yeah, pass rushers. So who was your... Who would your who would your who would your NFL legendary uh, pass rushers be? I'm telling you, I put Aaron Donald in the middle. Yeah, Aaron Donald in the middle. I'm going deep. Other one is uh, what's his name? Uh, Green Bay. Oh, Freeney. No, 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 no. He passed away. Reggie White. Reggie White. Uh, rest Lawrence in peace. Taylor. Rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah. Lawrence Taylor. Yeah. I feel yeah. You get that's my outside linebacker. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> 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 The end. That's, That's it. Good. That's good. Good job, awesome. guys. I know you guys get to uh, get out of here. Obviously, he gets us. Make sure everyone goes to he gets us. Is it he gets us dot com? He gets us dot com. Everything is he gets us uh, X, Instagram. He gets us. And 
he gets his dot com. Awesome. Yeah, Before I let you guys go, how fun is that? As Cam Newton walked over, you know, guy, saying man. hi. That's how fun guy. is it for you guys seeing yeah. a lot of these other players that maybe you don't see a lot anymore? Maybe they've retired. Yeah. Is, it, is it really enjoyable cool, for you guys? Man. or? Cool. It's, just, it's a brotherhood. Yeah. It's, it's good, man, to see guys that you don't really spend that much time with unless they're on your team and then see them. Because, you know, you see, you see them after the game and then you, you fly to another city. So it's always sure. good to see them at events like this. Cool. Awesome. Thank you guys so Thank much. You guys so Appreciate much. you guys. Appreciate it. Awesome yeah. stuff all yeah, Brandon. Thank you guys so much. You no know problem. Y'all have a good one, all right? Yeah, you you too, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. See you guys. Take it easy, guys. Thank you. Take it easy. And again, make sure you guys go to hegetsus.com. Brandon Cooks and Stefan Gilmore. Gilmore. Again, oh my gosh. both those guys have been so good. I'm so glad I put them on the spot, you know, like I came over that question out of the just throwing it out there. Like you were just, confusing them. Yeah. Malcolm, you got them. Yeah. You stumped them. Yeah. Were you trying to stump them? I was. You were trying to stump them. Yeah, I was. So if you had a dream team of NFL uh, legends, Ooh. who would your dream team be? That's a very, very good call. Derek Thomas. Uh-huh. Bobby Bell. Right. Willie Lanier. Yep. Jerron Sherry, I haven't seen Chiefs at this point. Come on. Yeah. No, it's a good, it's a good question. It's tough. Yeah, I think Ray Lewis in the middle. Maybe Luke Keekley can make a you can make a case for it because I loved Luke Keekley growing up. Um, My kicker would be Adam Vinatieri. Bruce Smith. Um, Lawrence Taylor. You got a lot of pass rushers there. Yeah. Aaron, I think Aaron Donald is in the conversation. Honestly, I found it interesting. I, I do think Trent Williams you can almost get in the conversation at left tackle now. I really yeah, do. You really do. When he, when he said that you got to go older, I go. I almost think Trent Williams at this point, he he, might, he has a serious case for the best left tackle of all time. I think he can make it at least. How about a uh, how about a uh, <clears throat> how about a celebrity? If a celebrity was able, you know, if you could throw it to one celebrity, who would you throw it to? <clears throat> oh wow! Yeah. Who would you throw it to? If I had if I had the opportunity, I would throw it to. Rest in peace, uh, Regis Philbin. Really? Yeah, Regis Philbin. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Love the big hat guys. Yeah. People walking around in big hats. The, if you guys don't know, if you're the audio listener, look up the uh, Brian Robinson big hats. There's been a lot of these big hats rolling around here. It's been pretty, uh, pretty entertaining. I don't know who I would choose, man. That's a really good question. Um, I would say Tyreek Hill would be fun, but I couldn't throw it that far, so I'd just be under throwing him the whole time. Right. <clears throat> Travis Kelsey, maybe? Yeah. Could be kind of fun? Yeah. I would throw it sidearm. You could throw it sidearm now? Yeah, I would throw it sidearm just like Patrick Mahomes would. I would throw it sidearm to Regis Philbin. Rest in peace. I would also throw it to, oh my gosh, I would love it to throw it to Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart be great. He'd, yeah, Kevin, he'd be Kevin funny Hart. about it, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would. Yeah. He'd be funny about it. That that'd be that'd be one celebrity I would throw it to. Uh, Lamar Jackson won his second career NFL MVP award last night. It was nearly unanimous. Yes. He had 49 mm -hmm. of the 50 first place votes. No second place votes, and then a third place vote. He deserved MVP. He, I, I think he did. The 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 man that came in second was Dak Prescott, man that came in third, Christian McCaffrey, and the man who was in fourth, none other than his teammate, Brock Purdy. If you had to, if you had to pick for MVP, Lamar Jackson or Christian McCaffrey, I would go run CMC. Yeah, I think I'd go McCaffrey too. Yeah. Um, I thought what he did this year was yeah. deserving. Right. Um, I understand the value that a quarterback brings. I understand something more valuable than a running back just based on some of the analytical numbers. Same time, I thought what McCaffrey did was historic. And as yeah. good as Lamar Jackson was, I think that's kind of what I, I just said. He was good. Um, I don't think he was necessarily elite this season because I don't know how many guys were elite this season. You know, even even yeah. to an extent, um, you know, Mahomes had slightly exactly. down year. Josh Allen had a slightly down, down year. year. Um, and again, Lamar Jackson was, was good, but we've seen him have better seasons as well. Right. Um, Dak Prescott getting second, a little bit of a surprise. Not a massive one, but maybe a little bit. Um, Josh Allen was the man who came in fifth, and he was the only other guy who took that first place vote away from Lamar. Yeah. 
little surprising to see Josh Allen get that first place vote. Well, Thought he was good. But again, I don't know if Josh Allen really was deserving, especially of a first right. place vote. Um, you also heard that there's going to be an, an international game next year in Madrid, Spain. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Yeah. 2025. Um, again, uh, Tyreek Hill came in sixth. A little bit low there. Then Mahomes, seventh. Got to go all the way down before you get to a Would you think Tyreek Hill would have been a little bit higher? Yes, I did. But I think the injury really hurt him. Right. That's I think nice. the injury, yeah. uh, especially towards the end of the season, was really a uh, the reason why. Right. I just think Tyreek Hill would have been a little bit higher. You know, if he didn't get hurt, it would have been higher, you know, in my mind. Well, if you got 2K, I don't know how you don't make him the MVP. Right. Uh, Miles Garrett was the def first defensive player on the list coming in at 10th with one fifth place vote. How'd you feel about Joe Flacco getting comeback player of the year last night? Yeah, that was tough for me, man. I, I understand if you want to take on field performance into the equation. Right. Then I think clearly that makes a lot of sense. But same time, um, a man passed away in the field and came back and played again the next year. Right. So, if I had a vote for for comeback player of the year, I would have went Baker Mayfield. You know, over Joe Flacco. Because Baker too. Mayfield, you have to remember, he played on a pat, he played on a pat, uh, on a practice squad with Carolina. He was thrusted into the Rams last year. And actually won on a Thursday night against the Raiders, if you remember. Yep. That Thursday night game against the Raiders, you know, when he played for the Rams last year. Came back and literally won that game. So, to me, if I would have had a vote, I would have went Baker Mayfield over Joe Flacco. I would have too, actually. If you're going to use that route of you're not going to Mar, uh, I think I'm going with the guy who has done it more. Right. Who did it more and not just a third or a half of the season. Give me the guy who did it all year. Again, the Buccaneers weren't a great team, right? But but still, offensively they were solid. And right. Baker Mayfield, I think, had a really, yeah, really good year. Yeah, Baker Mayfield had a solid year, and I saw him in the wild card game against the Eagles. Yeah, three touchdown passes. He would have had more if Mike Evans, you know, he dropped a few, which, you know, which could have propelled the Buccaneers to get a bigger lead. But they didn't need those points because you know they were able to slow down Jalen Hurts all night long. They got pressure on Hurts when they were supposed to, and. You know, and they came up big when it mattered most. I thought you were about to start singing all night long right there. Yeah, from from Lionel Richie. You tell me you got a voice. You told me you got some pipes yeah, there. Yeah, I do. I'm, I'm saving my pipes, you know, for Sunday. Oh, for Sunday. For Sunday. I got to oh. save my pipes there. Uh, you got, so you got to save them for Sunday? Yeah, I got to save for Sunday. Uh, I'm trying to give too much away. A uh, couple of uh, comments to get to. Sean says Flacco deserved it. Sean, I agree with you on a lot of things, my, my guy. I, I would have gone Baker before Flacco. Yeah. I don't so. know where I would have gone. I'm not. I've not decided, even though it's already been voted on, between Demar and Baker. I think yeah. it's a very difficult. Sean, to me, I would have. I would have. I would have went the Baker route over Flacco, just because the way Baker Mayfield was able to come back this season for the Buccaneers. Don't get me wrong. Joe Flacco is a wonderful story, but to me, Baker Mayfield to me, clearly should have won Combat Player of the Year in my mind. Yeah. Uh, another one. Oh, going back to the question uh, of who you would like to throw to throughout history, someone said Abraham Lincoln on a go route. Wow. What about that one? We're going historical. Yeah, we're going historical. Ben, ben like Franklin, that. maybe. Or George Washington. You think George Washington is that, that yeah. might be the guy you're going yeah, with? Yeah, that would be my guy, George Washington. Uh, I did find it very interesting uh, today. Uh, it was the last night or today. Um, last night, the Jets owner really got into Woody Zach Johnson? Wilson. Yeah, Woody Johnson got into the team as well as Zach Wilson. Uh, there was a red carpet interview he had with ESPN's Jeff Darlington. Um, and what? And, and what did the? And what did uh, Woody Johnson, the owner of the Jets, have to say uh, last night? Did well, in regards to Zach Wilson, yeah, he did say. You need to have a backup quarterback. We didn't have a backup quarterback last year. Yeah. Uh, pretty wild thing to say. Uh, really putting a lot of pressure on Robert Sala, saying we have all this talent. We have to uh, deploy talent properly. So I think they all got the message. This is it. 
this is the time to go. We've got to produce this year. Um, you're putting a lot of pressure right now on Robert Sala, who, by the way, Robert Sala, a defensive-minded head coach, now to, uh, tasked to say he's going to concentrate on offense. He's got D.C. Jeff Ulbrich there to do the defense. So We've got your, special teams. So offense, what's your offense, thought offense. on Robert Sala for the Jets? Do you think do you think the Jets are going to win this upcoming year, or do you think they're probably another year or two away from actually truly competing in, in the AFC with teams like the Chiefs, the Bills, the Dolphins, the Ravens. Well, I think if Rodgers comes back next year, there's a good chance of that, but that's a conversation for another time. Right. Who we got here now, Malcolm? We got Chief Operating Officer Brian Ford of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. How are you doing today, Brian? I am doing fantastic. How are you doing? That's I'm doing a big fantastic thing. To, I'm doing fantastic You're as well, nonstop. Brian. You've, yeah. been, you've been uh, up and down. What do you think of Vegas? Uh, Vegas is amazing. From what you've seen of it, you, what, you've what, been here interviewing yeah, everybody. I, I've been here, I've been interviewing everybody all week long, and uh, it's been uh, it's been phenomenal. And uh, I just want to say thank you for, uh, for for taking the time to be with us today. No, thank you, thank you for for having me on, and it's great to see. You. It was good to see you on the red carpet yesterday too. So let me get your thoughts on NFL honors last night, Brian. Uh, share a little bit about that. No. What your thoughts were? It's always a, a highlight of uh, the Super Bowl to recognize people that have gone over and above, and uh, mm -hmm. the league does a great job. And the fandom in that that arena last night was just unbelievable. All the fans from all 32 teams, and just the fans of the NFL, and that's really what gets ex me excited. So, your your chief operating officer for the box, obviously. Talk about the day to day operations. What is it that you do? And. Uh, just go, you know, just speak a little bit about that. Well, no, really, I uh, I have the distinct opportunity to kind of bring everybody together mm -hmm. uh, in our organization. Yeah. You know, I tell people all the time we can be affected by what happens on the field, right. but we can't be dependent. So, you know, we have to exceed our customers' expectations. If we could win championships every year, you know, that would be it. But um, we're in the entertainment business. Right. And we have fans, and they spend their hard-earned money to come out. And we have to give them a reason to come out. And it can't just be about wins and losses. So uh, I, I get the distinct opportunity to pull people together, yeah. to try to listen, to try to create, and reinvent ourselves each and every game, each and every day throughout the year, and just try to promote the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on behalf of the Glazer family and our whole organization. And uh, it's a lot of fun. I work with remarkable people. I get to meet people like you and uh, interact uh, with military folks, with Special Olympics, with pediatric cancer, and you know, to try to bring awareness. We have a platform mm -hmm. that's very special that people you know, come out and they want to hear what we have to say, and our athletes are fantastic. You, I heard you met our quarterback, Baker Mayfield, yeah. yesterday. He, he spotted you with that Buccaneer pin on the red yeah. carpet, I heard. I heard you so, gave it to Malcolm. Absolutely, <laughs> yes, yes. So, so, uh, so, uh, Obviously, um, obviously, were the were the Buccaneers a team you you grew up rooting for? You know, I I, I tell my bosses and they know the story, but I grew up in South Florida, uh -huh. so I was a diehard Dolphin fan, oh, and I wow. actually uh, opened up in my prior career, uh, Joe Robbie Stadium, yeah, where the Dolphins it used to and it always be yeah. Joe Robbie Stadium for right. me back in 1987. Mm -hmm. So I was a huge Dolphin fan, but then uh, when an opportunity came about to come to Tampa in 1998 with the construction of Raymond James Stadium, I found myself here in Tampa. And after about nine years, the, the Glazer family invited me to come work directly for them. And I've been in this role ever since, 17 seasons, yeah. and yeah. I've never looked back. So uh, I'm a Buccaneer now. <laughs> so what impressed you the most this season about Baker Mayfield? Like what impressed you most about him? You know, I go back to the day in training camp. You were there, I believe, and we had all the Special Olympic athletes come yeah. out. And just his interaction, you know, on and off the field, he's been a true Buccaneer. And just, uh, you know, from leading the, the locker room and the players mm -hmm. and getting coaches excited and, and players excited and staff excited. So it's, you know, it's a lot about the X's and O's. But as the business guy, I like to see the fan interaction and just, you know, what he did off the field is equally as important and impressive. 17 years, how have you seen it grown from your first year until now, obviously? What have been the bigger overarching changes you've seen? You know, it's just so many options. We live in paradise in Tampa. Yeah. So people have a choice of what they 
do from an entertainment standpoint. And each and every day we have to, there's no long-term contract. We have to, you know, keep reinventing ourselves and, you know, we have to keep up with the times and it's yeah. a, you know, younger generation. We're trying to bring younger folks in and try to give them a reason to come become Buccaneer fans. And it's, uh, it's an exciting process, but really it's the people and it's uh, technology. Technology has completely taken off to try to change the game day experience. And it's, it comes down to customer service. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I, you got to wear my Super Bowl ring yesterday. I did. And Wait I'm very proud now, of that. Malcolm, you, you rocked that thing? Yeah. yeah. I the Super Bowl ring yesterday from Brian at the it, it, at Did NFL. it fit on you? It I know did. you got some big hands. I yeah. got some huge hands. It, no, no, it, it fit. But, uh, it you know, fit. I'm very excited and proud of that. But I'm equally as proud that 10 out of, out of the last 12 years, we've been number one in overall customer satisfaction. And that just doesn't happen. That's uh, that's something that the Glazer Number families one, instilled. Customer, and customer service, you know, Number it comes down to service uh, satisfaction, wow. Brian. Wow. But there's that Super Bowl ring. Yeah, Malcolm. it'll look good on your hand. Look at there. that Super Bowl ring right there, Malcolm. Look, look at that. Look at, look, look at that. Look at that bad boy. Yeah. You're gonna hold it out like that. Show the camera. There. Audio listeners can't uh, can't see it, but this bad boy is 12 pounds. This, is, yeah, this, this 12 bad boy. Pounds. He's making his arm on your toe. Now. That's a broken toe, Malcolm, yeah. if you drop that on your feet right now. So, and you know what? We, uh, I think you were actually at the game. Which game did you come out for? I came out for the Eagles and uh, Bucks uh, wild card game. Wild card game. And then earlier in the year, I wanted to get you out for yeah. the for I went our, to the uh, Saints uh, Buccaneers uh, game in the regular season. Right. But we got me, we got to get the winning going. Yeah, we got to um, get the winning, right? So, speaking of that, um, where do you see the Buccaneers uh, heading into the offseason? You know, uh, share about uh, where do you see this team uh, going into uh, the offseason? Well, into the offseason, I got to tell you, um, we work with uh, Mr. Jason Lighton, our, our general manager, and yeah. his entire scouting department. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, they do a remarkable job in finding talent. You know, how many rookies did we start last season? Mm -hmm. And next guy up, and when injuries happen, just yeah. phenomenal. So really, he's trying to, he's a magician. He's trying to figure out the pieces, where the holes, where the needs, and trying to work with our new offensive coordinator and Coach Bowles. It's going to be an exciting offseason. Let me ask you for your Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl uh, um, preview here. Uh, Chiefs and Niners. Do you have an X factor that's going to be a difference outside of Brock Purdy and uh, Patrick Mahomes? Well, you know, I have to go back, you know, a few years earlier than that, number 47. Yeah. You know who number 47 is? John Lynch. That's right. So the, the general manager of the 49ers, I think that's going to be the deciding factor because of that Buccaneer connection. Do you have a final score prediction? You know, I, I, I'm a Buccaneer fan, so I don't get into that. But <laughs> I do want to talk, you know, the days of John Lynch and, and, and coming back. And Absolutely. you were there. You remember the, the uniform that we brought back this yes, past year, the creamsicle. Yes. And that was a big hit. Yes. Glorious. Yes, yes. The creamsicle. Well, I, I got something here I wanted to present to you. And it's wow. it's one of those creamsicle wow. jerseys. I love it. How about that? Malcolm, oh, the number one. Oh Malcolm right gosh. now is getting a beautiful so let, creamsicle. Cream You're going to have to put that on there, and we're going to have to get you jersey. to come out for our next creamsicle game there. Yeah, let me there you Malcolm. Go. There you that go, number one, because you are number one in my heart. Oh, man, this is, a, this is amazing. There you go. Beautiful. Malcolm, that is awesome. The creamsicle, the best jersey in sports. The best jersey in sports right here. And now you have uniforms. your name on it. I'm telling you guys, this is one of the best peaceful uniforms in the NFL. There you go. And now you're going to be wearing it, so you got to sport it now. You got to sport that. You got to sport it. Absolutely, Brian. You know, because that'll drive sales when they see you wearing it. Yeah, there we go. You know, this is what I'm counting on. When they oh see, you know, they're going to say they need to get one. Yeah. Brian Ford, Chief Operating Officer of the Tampa Buccaneers, honor and privilege for you to come on with us today on Stack in the Box. Thank you so much for your time today, Brian. Truly appreciate you, man. And uh, and and what a true friend. Uh, You've been in my life, and I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate everything you do. You know, you're uh, you're amazing, you're phenomenal, and I'm just so glad I get to be part of this uh, part of this uh, family, and I'm and I'm just appreciative. Well, that's that you are. You're part of the Buccaneer family and the Ford family, and we're very proud of you and what you've accomplished. You just keep going, and remember, there's nothing, nothing that you can't do. Brian Ford, Chief Operating Officer of the Tampa Buccaneers. Thanks for your time today, Brian. Thank you for the opportunity.
Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I will Thank say you. that that ring brings me a little bit of uh, angst right there. You know, because I, I know I know what team you had to beat. So right, right. <laughs> pains me just a little bit here. That's what, all right. Why is it bringing so much angst though, uh, though, though, Sterling? Like, well, I thought the Chiefs had a good chance of winning that Super Bowl, Malcolm. Twenty twenty. Hey, I thought they did over the Buccaneers, and quite frankly, guess what? They got mm -hmm. their butts kicked. Yeah. Did not end up very well for KC. Um, but it ended up well for us, Malcolm. Yeah. This is a great time to do this, wow. man. We're wrapping yeah. up. Yeah, we're wrapping up, stacking the box uh, for you know for the last time here at, uh, at at Meteor Row. What a what a ride! I what a week. Yeah. You know, you know, me and Sterling, you know, fan sign and Special Olympus. Thank you, obviously, to Special Olympus and Fan Sider, You know, you know, for this partnership. It's been amazing. You know, we're going to continue. You know, we're going to continue to do more things in the future. Definitely more opportunities and. Uh, I'm just so grateful and appreciative for Sterling, for, for Richard, for Patrick, for uh, Hunter, Amy, and uh, Sean, and, and the Fanside team. This has been amazing. So I want to say thank you, Fanside, so much, you know, for, for having me on this whole entire week um, as Unified Reporter. Malcolm, this was a lot of fun, man. You got a great jersey as well going home with that, and yeah. you're going to the game. Yeah. Very jealous of that. So you have fun. Yeah, I'll be back. I got to do I got to do more work on Sunday. Yeah. Pre-game, halftime and post-game on the Arrowhead Addict podcast. Until then, we are, are out. out. Thank you guys so much.